candle, please bring it forward and light your chalice or candle as Clara Alberto shares our chalice lighting words. Good morning, everyone. And uh, just really quickly, I'd like to call in the spirit of the people, the original people of this land. Uh, as I've been asked to do by different groups. Okay. Our time together in worship is intimately connected with our daily lives. As a symbol of that connection, we light our home chalices in a spirit of love, hope, and peace. How shall we be known to ourselves, to each other, to the world? Who are we in times of despair, when threatened with injustice, when blessed with joy and delight? May we be known as the people who love, as the ones who show up time and again with compassionate hearts and hands ever ready to help build a more just, equitable, and liberative world. May your day be filled with faith, love, and purpose. Thank you, Clara. And now we turn to one another and continue to welcome each other in. If you wanna type in words of welcome in the chat box, now is the time to do that. This is also a really good moment to scroll through the faces of the people who are here um, longing to build community and connection with you. And again, to just silently to send out your own uh, love and warmth to all who are attending our Zoom worship today. Matthew reminds us the land he is on, the Tongva, and the, I will want Matthew to share the pronunciation correctly um, of the other tribe. Thank you, Matthew. And Diane says, beautiful Clara, and it was indeed. Joe's welcoming everyone. Cindy Bradeen is here and so glad to see us. Stephen is back from his travels, taking Oriana um, to New York. Stephen, we are so glad you're back here and with us on Zoom. Roy, thanks Clara as well. Sky says, love to all here, alive and in spirit. We are here together. David says, hello family. Russ, Stacy, we are so glad you're back with us again this Sunday. Thank you for saying hello. Brandy welcomes cute cat pictures and heart emojis. Well, Brandy, some of us have no end to our collection of cute cat photos. So you have really just opened the gates to that now. Um, and I'm so glad I could use some as well if people are sending those in. Clara says, so great to see everyone. The photos make her happy. Yes, they do me too. Derek offers blessings. And Phyllis, hello, welcome back. Phyllis says, hello and namaste. And we'll please, again, continue to use the chat box to send greetings and um, to wish each other well and 
to continue making our connections. One connection we are going to solidify this morning is our welcome of Matthew P. Taylor, Tech Communications Coordinator Extraordinaire. Um, he has been wonderful to work with this past week and a few days. Um, and so we'll have a way for you all to welcome Matthew in just a moment. That will be led by Chris. But Matthew, right now, I just want to offer you uh, some maybe reminders and a little bit of blessing. As our tech and communications coordinator, in your role, you will kind of bring all of us into fuller and deeper worship life and connections with one another. We hope to draw you in to being a part of our troop community. We invite you to bring your whole and holy self into this role, bringing your creativity and ideas, your knowledge and expertise. We invite you to bring the fullness of your mind, heart, body, and spirit. And we ask that through all of your gifts, you help us go out and love the world. Now I hand things over to Chris Maldonado, music director. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome Matthew Taylor. So in troop choir fashion, um, we will welcome him using our snap cup ritual. So I'm going to lead us through the song, and then we will share some affirmations uh, that will lift up and um, give him some snaps. Um, so, snap cup time, snap cup time, gather ye round. Friends and foes together, united and bound. Pass it to your neighbor instead of blowing up, and we'll find peace, harmony, love in the snap cup. <laughs> So everyone, please um, type in the chat box some positive affirmations um, for Matthew Taylor to welcome him. And um, we'll take a short moment to read some of them aloud. I'd like to start just by giving Matthew Taylor some snaps for founding Covenant UU. I haven't founded anything, so snaps for Matthew. Um, Brandy Prime says positive affirmations to Matthew Taylor. Yes. Diane says, we are so glad that you're here. Thank you, Diane. Yes, and snaps for that. Um, I also wanted to lift up some snaps for Matthew's readiness to share information about this native land that we're on. Snaps for Matthew. Steve Dvorkin says, can't wait, to, can't wait to nerd out with you in person. Yes, we look forward to those days. Andriana says, uh, snaps for the Snap Cup song. Um, welcome, Matthew. Great to have you here. Yes. So as people continue to maybe send you their affirmations, I also wanted to thank you uh, one more time, Matthew Taylor for the beautiful and powerful um, reading, uh, the, the, sorry, your writing that you let us share a couple Sundays ago. Um, it was really powerful and everyone was so grateful for your powerful prayer. Um, so thank you and snaps to you for sharing that with us. And um, Claire, oh, yeah, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew, I know you're like running, uh, running the tech. I hope you're able to to take a peek into the chat box. I know it can be hard to look at it when you're pushing buttons and making sure um, other things are happening. But we definitely give you our warm troop welcome, um, and. We have our kind of snaps that we give our planet Earth every single Sunday that we're together. You'll see the words for our promise to our planet um, come up on the screen. And this is one of the moments where we um, unmute, you can unmute yourself 
um, if you're able to push that button and we'll, we'll share these words together. As members, As members of the family of Bingley on Earth, on Earth, Earth, we are guided, guided by the, by the Unitarian Universal Principle of Respect related to the web, web of all existence, which we are a part of. Are a part. With hearts with hearts filled with love, 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 and nurtured by its beauty, minds ruminating as ways to take the space and scarce resources of the planet. We promise to nurture the well being of all life. Oh, and I heard a most like delightful, sounded like a really young person and singing almost to the planet with us. And I'm not sure who that is, but we are really glad you're with us today. That added a whole, whole new kind of layer and level um, of gratitude. So this summer, newer troop members will be invited to share their spiritual journey. And Brene Brown wrote, owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is one of the bravest things we can do. In telling our stories, we learn more about ourselves it helps others get to know us. And of course, when we are listening to someone else's story, it also gives us the chance to know ourselves in a new and a fuller way. I'm so happy that one of our newest members, Harlow Robinson, will share some of his spiritual journey with us this morning. Thank you, Harlow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tara. And it's really nice to be here. We've been enjoying being part of these services, uh, well, for the entire summer. And uh, we, we were able to go to Troop for some real services, in-person services, back in the spring before everything uh, shut down. So Tara asked me to talk a bit about how I came to UU, uh, to uh, the UU Church generally, and also how I came to Troop. So that's what I'm going to share with you this morning. My mother's father was a Methodist minister in Massachusetts, in uh, near Boston. But my early church upbringing came in the Congregational Church, now known as the United Church of Christ. Uh, this denomination is actually a close cousin to the UU Church, but less liberal and tolerant of diversity, at least in my experience. The church my family attended in Connecticut as I was growing up was one of those classic white New England landmarks, dominating the town green, spare and unadorned inside. We sang many of the same hymns we sing together at Troop. And for me, that's a, con a spiritual continuity. Uh, Tara was mentioning earlier, these hymns, uh, they just uh, really reach deep in me since I heard them from when I could first understand what music was, really. Uh, and uh, I sang in the youth choir in, in, in that church. Um, so later though, um, I became enamored of Russian orthodoxy <laughs> through my study of Russian language and literature which led to my career as a college professor uh, teaching Russian literature, history, and culture. Um, I joined a Russian chorus that performed Orthodox liturgical music, and I attended services in Orthodox churches in Russia during my time there as an undergraduate and a graduate student. Uh, this colorful and theatrical Orthodox liturgy so completely different from <laughs> the UU ritual with its pageantry, passion, and mysticism provided a remarkable contrast to the restrained and quiet atmosphere of the congregationalism of my youth during the Soviet era, especially when I was traveling to the uh, USSR quite frequently, Russian Orthodoxy also became an embattled denomination persecuted by the relentless, relentlessly atheistic communist 
regime. Those who attended church in Russia during those years were considered dissidents and risked their careers and even personal safety to be a part of that ancient tradition which goes back in Russian history to the uh, acceptance of Christianity in 988. So more than 1,000 years old is the uh, Russian Orthodox tradition. Uh, since the fall of the USSR, Orthodoxy has returned to a central place in Russian life, although it's unfortunately embraced a reactionary role in social and cultural life under, uh, during the Putin years, which now appear to be going on forever. <laughs> Uh, although um, I never considered joining the Orthodox Church, well, maybe for a few minutes when I visited a monastery and saw the monks, oh, they were living, which uh, I, I never considered joining, be, largely because of its uh, rather reactionary political views, and especially towards the LGBTQ community, the Russian Orthodox Church has been quite active in fighting against um, uh, allowing gay marriage in Russia and generally just very socially conservative. But I did very much appreciate the Orthodox spiritual tradition and music and especially um, miss the idea of mysticism, which was uh, very important in uh, Russian Orthodoxy. And you know, maybe you read in the news yesterday that um, so unfortunately, the, the uh, president of Turkey has decided to turn uh, the great uh, um, spiritual center of Hagia Sophia into a mosque that, of course, originally was built as an Orthodox church. And in fact, it was a visit to that church by a group of Russian princes uh, during the 900 ADs. They saw this amazing place and they said, we didn't know whether we were in heaven or on earth. And they went back to Russia and told the Grand Prince, this is the religion we should have, <laughs> because they loved that sanctuary so much, really. After I came out as a gay man and found my partner and now husband, Robert Holly, here he is. <laughs> and you'll hear from him, uh, and you'll hear from him next week. Um, I fell away from organized religion for many years living in New York and Los Angeles during the AIDS epidemic, which claimed so many of our close friends, we found ourselves shunned and demonized by many church leaders. There seemed to be no place for us there. In 1996, we moved to Boston, where we lived for the next 22 years. Soon after arriving, I joined the Boston Gay Men's Chorus, on Christmas Eve, I sang with the chorus in its traditional appearance at the candlelight services of Arlington Street UU Church. And maybe you know of Arlington Street Church. Some people call it the UU Vatican. Uh, it's a wonderful, very old building uh, right in the center of Boston. There, we found a congregation led by a proud out lesbian preaching a message of inclusion and diversity and love. And actually, Bob will tell you a little bit more about this um, moment next week when he talks. We were rather amazed the church could be like this. We started attending regularly and became members in 2003 of ASC. And the following year, Robert and I were married there and became deeply involved with church governance and activities. Uh, Robert did a lot to maintain the historic uh, building of Arlington Street Church, which has Tiffany windows and a lot of other things that need a lot of care. And I actually served on the board and on the worship committee, and um, we um, enjoyed a lot of fellowship there. Two years ago, I retired from my uh, position at Northeastern University, uh, where I was teaching history. And we realized our longtime goal of returning to Southern California where we had lived in the 1980s. One of the first things we did was to find a UU congregation. And this search has led us to Truth and its wonderful uh, building and to Tara and to all of you. And we are so grateful to be here. So in conclusion, we both look forward to being a part of this welcoming and diverse congregation. Thank you. Thank you, Harlow, so much.
Thank you for opening your own heart to us at Troop, to this community. And I'm so glad that Unitarian Universalism has been a spiritual home for you and Robert for so many years. Um, Matthew, I don't want to put you on the spot. If we were together in worship, I would be looking at you right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I just, <laughs> I want to go back to a few minutes ago when you um, typed into the chat the name of the land that you're on. And I uh -huh. wonder if you would be willing to speak those names into our troop Zoom. So I'm on the Yahavia Tom land, also known as the Tongva, um, also the Serrano people, the also the Kawia. Um, I'm out in uh, San Bernardino County. I'm in Highland. I actually live less than 10 minutes from um, the reservation where San Manuel is and all of the, the Indian lands. So I'm about 10 minutes from there. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you for bringing those sacred names into our sacred space. Um, and I see that some of you are um, affirming and welcoming Harlow and Robert in. Um, thank you all for doing that um, in this way. So um, I invite you to take a, a breath in now together. Exhale. If it feels right to put your hand on your heart and to take a breath in. Just being mindful of the sacred ground we are on, the sacred space we create together even on Zoom. And this online sacred space doesn't happen by chance. Doesn't even happen because of me or Matthew or Chris, though we are a part of it. But what makes this space sacred together on Sunday morning is what you all are able and willing um, to put into it. That you show up here with hearts open and tender, that you show up here with courage to reach out to one another gently and with care. Knowing that we hold people in our lives, uh, not only those of us who are here on Zoom, but you know, folks who are big parts of our lives outside of Troop, um, we have a moment, if there's someone in your life who is in need of a healing prayer, who's in need of a little extra love today, um, I invite you to type that person or those people's name into the chat box. Um, and I ask all of us, when we see those names come up, to just send out our troop energy healing, love, and care for these dear ones in our lives. We see, we send out our love to Jean Alper, to Amber, to Chloe, to Mark, to Odere Garcia, Richard Maison, Victoria Lowell, Nick Wu, Mary Alvarez, Amy Devorkin. Our hearts are with our dear friend, Richard Maison, all joy and serenity to him. Amy, Katie, Ashley over the Rainbow Bridge, Ro Ramirez, Mary, Faith, Joe, and John.
And feel free to continue putting names into the chat box, continue to send your love out as we hear Chris sing, you, you, him, open my heart. Our hearts open isn't always easy, especially these days when we have so much coming at us. Supreme Court rulings, what feels like a tidal wave of new COVID cases, continued police brutality against Black lives, continued distance from loved ones, it can feel so overwhelming. And all of that's layered on top of whatever it is we're just carrying in our own personal lives. So if you showed up here today and if you're feeling overwhelmed, if your heart isn't quite as open as you would like it to be, if your emotional processing is at its limit, you are not alone. That's why this simple hymn we just heard has really become a prayer or a mantra to me over these past few months. I breathe in and say, open my heart, please. Breath of life, open my heart. Remind me what it is I'm seeking. Beauty, connection, love, peacefulness. Open my heart and let me be part of the love you give. Let that love flow through me and out of me to touch others. Even though the word love does not show up in any of our seven Unitarian Universalist principles, it's core to my own theology and it's core to our shared Universalist theology. Um, here's a photo coming up of a historical Universalist tent gathering. So this photo, uh, one of my UU historian friends think it was taken right around 1870. And she thinks it was from the 1870 Universalist Annual Meeting and Centennial Celebration 
in Gloucester, Massachusetts. Now you can, if you can see the photo, um, you see the big banner that says, God is love. And at the heart of universalism is the belief that God's love for us is so deep and so sure that all souls will be saved. And in 1791, universalist Dr. Benjamin Rush wrote, a belief in God's universal love to all God's creatures, and that God will finally restore those that are miserable to happiness. This is a polar truth. So while today the idea that God is love may seem commonplace, it might even seem trite, it may be a theological word, God, that doesn't rest well in your own heart. This was a radical idea back in the late 1700s when universalism came into being in the United States. At that time, the prevailing Calvinist theology was based in the idea of moral weakness and a sinful nature of human beings. So you can imagine the stir that the Universalists made when they showed up on the scene and said, God is love. This theology that said humans are inherently good and that ultimately all of us are saved. And we see this idea show up today in 2020 in our first Unitarian Universalist principle that says we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of all. And this universalist love didn't just stop at the self. The implications of a universal salvation were deeply democratic. We have always cared deeply about life on earth. And this all encompassing love becomes tangible through our actions to create a more just and equitable and liberative world. This universalist love is not one that is naive but it's one that's based in three distinct ideas. One is a veneration of humans and really of all life. Two, a cultivation of a spirit of peace and compassion toward all creation. And then the third, this mutual and universal love that some call God and some just let it remain nameless, that this mutual and universal love that connects each and every one of us, it obligates us to work for the freedom and liberation of all. It obligates us. We can't turn away from it. Open my heart, please remind me what I am seeking. Beauty, connection, love, peacefulness. Open my heart and give me strength and courage for this work I am obligated to do of justice. The mutual and universal love is calling us at troop into a fierce reckoning and urgent engagement with the world. We cannot turn away from interlocking systems of suffering like racism, poverty, and environmental degradation. The mutual and universal love is calling those of us who identify as white into a fierce reckoning and urgent engagement with ourselves. Our larger faith community of Unitarian Universalism is asking us to notice and confront the ways that white supremacy impacts our congregational life. The 
Reverend Dr. Sophia Bentoncourt writes, there's a police helicopter overhead. The Reverend Dr. Sophia Bentoncourt writes that we are the theological inheritors of teachings on universal salvation. It is our very universalism that is at stake when we turn away from the impact that our institutions have on the same communities and groups that society encourages us to dehumanize and make small. We are being called into deep and significant change work. And this work will require humility, and creativity and trust among us. I go back to that prayer, open my heart, remind me what I am seeking, beauty, connection, love, peacefulness. Open my heart so I can turn toward the brokenness inside me Give me the courage and strength to begin to heal it. So for the white people in our church who are ready to confront the brokenness of the systems of white supremacy culture, we have a way to engage and be in conversation with one another coming up soon. And you're invited to be part of our White Fragility book group. We'll start meeting in a couple of weeks and I'll have the sign up link for that in the chat box in just a few moments. And for our people at Troop who identify as black, indigenous and people of color, this is just my pastoral reminder to you to find ways to rest and restore and engage in healing practices. For all of us together, we stay connected through the big love of universalism. What we have in front of us in the world and our personal lives, it's big. But when you feel tired and discouraged, when you feel overwhelmed and insecure, turn toward that big universal love and remember that it's holding you. And as you look at these beloved faces on the screen with you, that love is holding them. It's holding the people next to them. We are in this together. My prayer, open our hearts. Remind us what it is we are seeking. Beauty, connection, love, peacefulness. Open our hearts and let us turn again toward one another. Let us discover ever new ways to live and lead together in love. Amen and may that be so. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these vines. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth.
returning we shall learn to be in love. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these Thank you to UU The Vote for letting us use that beautiful um, video. It's the Now We Thrive online choir. And Jen Heyman, music director from All Souls Unitarian Church DC, directed that choir and music video. And thank you for all of the ways you support our troop community. You support us through gifts of time and talent and treasure. There are ways that you can donate financially on the screen in front of you. You can give online. You can text to give. You can also send a check in to troop. I think those um, ways will come up too on your chat box screen. Um, each week, the board recognizes one among you as a super trooper, and today, Taryn Sindaband, Vice President of the board, has the honor of giving that award. This week, our Super Trooper Award goes to Jean Prince. Jean, we thank you for your um, work with the pastoral, pastoral care team. And we also thank you for your gifts um, that you've given the food bank and, the, um, and your work with uh, Devinville Pines. So Yay, thank you, Taryn, and thank you so much, Jean. We also lift up our thanks for those who helped make today's service happen. Joe Versteinen for being our chat box greeter, Clara Alberto for your chalice lighting words, Harlow Robinson for kicking off our spiritual journey series. Thank you all so much. And we turn now toward our collective um, response and thanks for the morning offering that we say together. For the ministries of the church, the church in our communities, we bless, bless our, our offering with love, with love and hope. So if you lit a chalice at the beginning of the service or a candle, you can start to bring that forward. We have ways for you to continue connecting this week. Some of those have been coming in and out of the chat box today, um, but please do, as you're able, show up for our ways that we continue to be rooted in community. We extinguish the flame of our chalice. 
but its light goes with us out into the world. I invite you in the coming days to remind yourself to open your heart and let the fire of your commitment for change and justice in the world come shining through. I love you all. Go love the world. Amen and blessed be. Thank you.